Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to review the SecuX V20 hardware wallet for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Support for over a thousand ERC20 tokens, and of course Ethereum, as well as various other altcoins that you may be interested in holding in a secure offline fashion in cold storage like this. And I'll summarize my thoughts and findings at the end of the video. But for now, let's talk about it and let's take a look at the unboxing. First things first, this unit was provided to me for testing and evaluation directly by SecuX. The SecuX team has not sponsored this video, nor have they edited or approved my remarks before I upload this video. What follows is my no holds barred first impression of the unboxing and the initial setup. Now let's watch that sexy unboxing footage while I tell you more. First off, here's what I like about the V20 by SecuX. It provides air gap signing of transactions no internet connection ever touches the same device that stores your private keys. It allows for signing Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency transactions with either a USB or Bluetooth connection to your choice of connected device. It features an industry recognizable Infineon SLE secure element chip. That gives it a distinct advantage over competitors with no secure element and allows for secure connected signing of transactions, whether over USB or Bluetooth, with far lower risk of having private keys stolen, even if an attacker physically possesses the device. The form factor of the SecuX V20 is somewhat ergonomic and stylish, but not what I would call convenient. More on that later. It is, however, very nice to have a fully touch-capable 2.8-inch color display, which makes certain operations much easier, including displaying fresh QR codes directly on the hardware wallet itself. The V20 takes a radical departure from the design cues of other hardware wallets by presenting a dodecagon, you know, a star with 12 points and 12 facets. The outside edge of the V20 is made from aircraft-grade aluminum, and it's crush-proof from all side angles, but like so many other touchscreen wallets, the main user interface could still probably be scratched if you tried hard enough. I'm still unable to find an ingress protection rating listed on the SecuX website, but based on my handling of it so far, I'm doubtful that waterproofing is a priority for this device. Another thing I like is that generating fresh 24-word seed phrases is easy, and if you've seen my other reviews, I prefer that when seed phrases are generated, it goes all the way up to the maximum allowable of 24 words. What it doesn't allow for is an additional 25th word to create sub-addresses. So kind of a bummer there, but there is a device pin, which sort of functions as a de facto 25th word. Also importing 12, 18, or 24 word seed phrases is super easy. You just put them in and you're off to the races. Everything shows up. And of course, your private keys and your mnemonic always stay off of your phone and computer when you load them into the SecuX V20 hardware wallet. Okay, the coin selection is all right. It's better than some budget options like KeepKey, though not nearly as robust as it needs to be right now to enjoy during DeFi Summer 2.0, and more on that later. The screen viewing angle is much wider than some of SecuX's competitors, such as the Elipal Titan, and this is a very good thing for displaying asymmetrical information like payment addresses and QR codes. Battery charging was extremely fast, as the provided USB Type-C cable is clearly designed for higher throughput. I haven't been able to test the battery life as of yet, but I'll report on that once I'm able to compare this wallet directly to some of its competitors and have lived with it for a few days or maybe a few weeks. The SecuX V20's touch interface with a full keyboard feels fast and responsive. And it includes a security keyboard for inputting the user pin, which is a great feature. The security keyboard scrambles the physical position of the various letters and numbers, so a screen touch logging tool or a nearby security camera wouldn't be able to guess a user's text input based on just observing their gestures alone. The SecuX V20 makes a very handsome desk ornament, which may be appealing to some users, though strictly speaking, this is a terrible security practice. So, uh, Hardware wallets, I'm sorry, they're, they're not display pieces if you have them loaded with your mnemonic. All right, now on to the stuff that I dislike. The SecuX V20 forces Bitcoin users to display only BIP44 addresses instead of BIP84. While this will protect new users from being sucked without compatibility to legacy exchanges and accounts, it also means slightly higher Bitcoin transaction fees for those users. 
it would be much better to allow users to choose which type of payment invoice they want to display between BIP44 or BIP84. That is to say, addresses that start with a 3 or addresses that start with a BC1, um, or legacy addresses that start with a 1. But that would be much better to let the users decide. It also doesn't allow users to create more than one Bitcoin payment invoice at a time, unless the previous one has already been used and the device has been connected to SecUX's web wallet to update the balance. This is a huge security issue. And while I understand that a hardware wallet is not able to, on its own, fetch those balance updates, it is a bit of an issue to be unable to create new payment addresses without that update. It would be nice to be able to generate more payment addresses in advance. There's also no apparent access to the XPUB keys, not even on the web app. And this is pretty important for improving the privacy of services that support XPUB keys like Swan Bitcoin. The XPUB key also makes it easier to pull in view-only wallets on third-party apps like Blue Wallet and various crypto payment gateways gateways for e-commerce. It also makes it a hundred times easier to calculate crypto taxes at the end of the year by simply using XPUB keys and then scraping all of the available transactions for that calendar or that fiscal year. Now on to a couple of other things I dislike. Ingress protection rating. It's been a running theme for me. If crypto stands any chance of being if crypto stands any chance of replacing cash and other payment methods, humans need to be able to use cryptocurrency wallets, hardware wallets like this, at the beach, or in the snow, or in rainy weather, period. And that means some degree of water resistance, if not full waterproofing. And I think that devices like this, because they're so big and overbuilt, they can probably add that without too much difficulty. It'd be great to see that added on. Another gripe that I have is that there's clearly no support for testnet coins on Bitcoin or Doge or any other potential testnets, not on Ethereum with the Robston network or other testnets for Ethereum, and none of the new EVM compatible networks. That is to say, networks that you could normally manually add to a tool like MetaMask, a wallet like MetaMask, networks like Binance Smart Chain, Polygon or Matic, Energy or Pulse Chain. All of these new networks have tens of thousands of users who will be unable to use their coins if they choose the V20 by SecuX. Ouch! And last but not least, my biggest discomfort is that there's no support for Monero. Guys, in 2021, there's literally no reason for this. You can use open source mnemonic translation tools that have been gifted to the community by Coinomi and fork merge the open source hardware wallet tools from Trezor, which supports Monero on the Model T. This would allow imported seed phrases to generate unique entropy, which then maps over to the Monero seed word list. And from there, signing should function very similarly to other coins that you support. Okay, so... Long and the short of it is, I see some limitations with the SecUX V20, and I see some clunkiness in the UI that for me is kind of a non-starter. Would I recommend this wallet to a friend or to a family member? In short, no, I wouldn't. Do I think it's a bad product? Well, no, it's not a bad product, but the user experience is a little bit rough, and I feel like there are other hardware wallets that, for the money, do not ask users to compromise, both in user experience as well as functionality and especially with the summer of DeFi 2.0, so to speak, there's really no excuse not to have support for third-party EVM compatible networks like Binance Smart Chain, Energy Network, Matic or Polygon, and others. Ethereum is not the only game in town and hardware wallet makers who do not support these other networks are missing out big time. So SecUX, you've got to add that support, push that firmware update, and of course, as always, I'm going to ask you, please, please, please consider supporting Monero. The sooner you support Monero, the more likely it is you'll change my mind about dealing with some of the clunkiness of the UI in exchange for that added functionality of supporting privacy coins. All right, thank you so much for watching at the end of the video. Thank you for hitting that like button, sharing this video with people who may be interested in an honest review of a new hardware wallet like the V20. Many of the other wallet reviews will just tell you the upside. I, I've got to tell you the downsides too. Of course, thank you for being subscribed. 
You're the reason I make this media. I love your face. Remember to stay private and mind your biz.